Right, hello everybody, this is Mauro Vallati and today we're going to speak about the importance of reusable abstractions for AI planning knowledge models or better uh, for planning in general. Uh, let's take a step backward and let's speak about the importance of knowledge in planning. So a critical aspect of what we usually term as domain independent planning is the application knowledge. So you have the planning logic, the search engine on the one side and on the other side you have knowledge which comes usually if you're dealing with PDDL, under the form of a domain model, which gives you the dynamics of a general domain, and an associated problem instance, which is the specific problem that you want to solve uh, at that moment in time. And the problem is that currently formulating this knowledge is something of an ad hoc process where a magician, like the one that we can see in this slide, uh, is sitting with his black robes, uh, maybe in a dungeon or maybe in a hidden lab somewhere, writing everything directly into PDDL, relying on his own wisdom and knowledge. And this is of course not ideal, uh, because this means that, well, on the one hand, the quality, whatever quality means in this uh, environment, but the quality of the models strongly depend on the specific expertise of the person which is writing the model. And uh, moreover, since you're doing this process in a kind of isolation, if you like, uh, you are reinventing the wheel every time. So every time in which you are starting to work uh, on a new model or uh, on a new problem, you have to rethink about the best way or the way which you remember how you encoded a similar dynamics or the same dynamic uh, previously, or how you have seen this done, for instance, in the IPC benchmark. So in the end of the day, we keep rewriting and redesigning the same thing over and over again. We are not passing on knowledge, and actually we don't know, beside our own direct experience, if the way in which we have encoded things is working well or not. And that's a big problem. And uh, to deal with these sort of issues in a different area of uh, the broader uh, computer science, uh, has been introduced the idea of reusable abstraction, mainly for computer science and software engineering under the form of design patterns. But reusable abstractions are basically a technique which allows you, instead of coding everything, speaking about planning, directly in PDDL, you can think about the model at the more abstract level, composed by different modules, uh, which are uh, collaborating and interface together and which are combined together, uh, in order to then create the lower level uh, PDDL model. So you are including a further step in your process, so instead of thinking I've got, a I've got a specification that I need to encode in PDDL and start writing in PDDL, uh, I've got a specification, I try to think about the specification in terms of uh, abstractions, so I try to abstract away important things, and, uh, and then I try to write these abstractions in PDDL. And uh, this can be done using design patterns, where design patterns are a recurrent problem and a well-tested solution for software engineers and computer science. But something went wrong in the application of design patterns in automated planning. So they are widely used, extremely well exploited in computer science and in software engineering and for writing codes, object-oriented code and whatever, and they are not really used in AI planning. Despite the fact that in the end of the day, uh, they are the same thing, they've just been translated to deal with PDDL. And uh, the, 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 only, uh, the, the only application, the only use of design pattern is some rudimentary form which has been used, uh, implemented in the planning.domains online editor, uh, where you don't really have design patterns in, 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 as uh, a description of a problem, uh, possible solution, examples, etc., etc. So you don't have a formal structure of a design pattern of or of a reusable heuristic, uh, but you only have uh, some PDDL structure that can be reused and exploited as you need. And the big question here is why did something went wrong? And uh, there are a number of different uh, uh, possibilities. It might have been the lack of a centralized repository, as there are for computer science, I don't know, source making, uh, for instance, is a very good website, which is a centralized repository for all uh, the object-oriented design pattern. And if you don't have a centralized repository, uh, it's very hard to store and share 
this knowledge which comes under the form of design patterns. Uh, there is probably also a lack of commonly agreed way for encoding them. Uh, how do you encode uh, the description of a problem, the variables that you can take into account? Uh, maybe the best way to encode things in PDDL in a slightly abstract way. Uh, and on top of that, there is still the perspective that we had just said before about the fact that uh, uh, we see encoding in PDDL as a magician art where you're doing everything in isolation by yourself uh, and also uh, a sort of belief that even if uh, you, that you don't really need to encode very good quality models because in the end of the day it's everything on the planning engine and uh, if your model is not working well on a planning engine you don't need to fix the model you can change the engine which is good which is correct but only to a certain degree and uh, so what we are advocating here really is uh, shall we bring design pattern back well first of all uh, of course, for the knowledge engineering area, but in here we are also suggesting that their importance can be uh, emphasized in explainability. So explainability is the area of AI where you try to explain basically uh, the decisions and the solutions which are provided by an automated system. <clears throat> and uh, if we speak, if we narrow down explainability uh, to the planning field, planning systems we know are heavily dependent on the knowledge models. And the knowledge models, <coughs> sorry, and the knowledge models can provide a very valuable source of information for explaining uh, the description, sorry, the behavior. Uh, but of course, these uh, the domain models and the problem models are not enough. They need to be complemented with additional information that can come under the form of design patterns. Uh, why? First of all, why do we need additional knowledge? Uh, because uh, the thing that you're putting in the model uh, are basically uh, the result of the number of decisions that, that have been made during the knowledge encoding. And uh, these decisions can come from a specific domain application, but can also come from the use of some design patterns or from the use of some specific dynamics that you want to encode. So in that sense, uh, the explanation and the problem description which comes with patterns is a very good mean for supporting the explanation. And of course there are also a number of other different sources of knowledge that can be that can come from inside the specific model. Namings for instance or you can try to connect your model with a specific domain for extracting some motivation why a specific uh, action is not allowed for instance and that sort of things. But design patterns can help and foster in giving motivation for some of the decisions which has been taken and why that sort of dynamics is encoded in that specific way. And well, basically, I already <laughs> said uh, a lot about this slide. So the main point, again, the main selling point of design patterns is that you don't need, they provide a very good means for attaching additional knowledge because that's exactly part of their notion. And the fact that you have a central repository means that you don't have to think about how to attach this additional knowledge or where to find it. It's only a matter of deciding how this additional knowledge is encoded, under which form, and here we have an example from a seminar work of the early 2000s where firstly design patterns were proposed for planning. So that can be a very good uh, first step towards the right direction. And design patterns were, a few design patterns were introduced with uh, some very bright ideas on how to encode them and how to exploit them and you can see down on the right hand side uh, that you can also consider a number of different variables so the design pattern is not a monolithic block that you have to reuse as it is uh, but you can set some variables and some aspects of it and these decisions that you are making can be included in that sort of problem descriptions that come with a design pattern so they are a very good and very valuable source of explanation and also of justification and motivation for the specific uh, model that you have designed. So what we are hoping here is that uh, explainability can provide momentum to resurrect design patterns and put them back in operation. And so for concluding, uh, what we try to say in this uh, talk and of course in the paper 
uh, is that, uh, well, first of all, don't try to write directly models in PDDL. Rely on reusable abstractions, even though it might be painful at the very start. And uh, the benefit for that is, first of all, we can have uh, reusing best practice, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel every time, but uh, we have a, a very good solution which are available. And secondly, design patterns, reusable abstractions can support explainability, which is extremely important right now in the AI context, as we can see it. So what we want to foster here is resurrect the idea of design patterns, reusable abstraction, and start to implement techniques and approaches for exploiting them in planning and for the planning community. Future work, uh, working on a suitable way for storing and managing design patterns, and uh, maybe taking the perspective of an explainable, friendly way for doing that. Having said that, thank you for your attention. 